All right, I got September 26. We're covering 7 1, 6 1, and possibly into 6 3 tonight. So, uh, first things first systems of e uh, equations for linears. Basically, a two by two system. And if you can look at this, you basically have three scenarios, right? You have where they um, basically it's orientating two lines. So, if you think about it, there's only a couple ways that you can orientate two lines. One, you can make them what? Intersect, right? All right. So if they intersect, the point of intersection, that dot, that point, that ordered pair, is the solution to the system. Okay? It works for both um, equations. Now, holy smokes, I might turn this thing up to 85. I don't know. It was that's hot. All right, you can take the two lines and make them parallel, which means they'll never touch. They'll maintain the same distance apart because they have the same slopes. So if they don't touch, then what's the answer? No solution. That's right. Because the solution is this, where they intersect or touch, right? So if they never touch, then they'll never be a solution so hence no solution now the last example is you don't see one you're like well i thought you were dealing with two lines well i am but you can take this line and lay it smack dab on top of that one and guess what you only see how many lines one okay so how do two lines that are the same how many times do they touch infinitely many right so now, you'll get to uh, look at these from a system standpoint, from an independent, inconsistent, and a dependent, okay? So if they ask you what's an independent, dependent, or consistent, then you have these three pictures to go back and look at it from one solution, no solution, infinite amount of solutions, right? So you need to make sure that those only, there are only three possible answers, period on these okay they're either going to intersect not touch or be the same line period questions all right all right so it says determine whether three comma negative three is, is a solution to the system well in order for it to be a solution that means that the left side should equal the right side now not only for one equation but for both it's got to work in both of them. So if we're looking at this, we're sitting here and we go, okay, that's 3 times 3 minus 4 times negative 3. It has to equal negative 21. Well, that's 9 plus 12. Does it equal negative 21, guys? Negative 21? Nah. Did I do my math right? That's my x. There's my y. So is this a solution? Now, right? That's the answer right there. Correct. So, if we came on on this and it worked for the first one, we would still have to check the second one, right? Because it could work for the first one, but not be a solution for the second one. Yes. It's just no solution. Not not a solution. Yeah, not a solution. Because when they give you all the pairs, they're just saying, hey, is this where they intersect? That's basically what you're saying. Because for an ordered pair to work in two linear equations, it has to be the point of intersection. All right, given the two intersecting lines, find the solution. Guys, what's the solution for this one? For what? Yeah, four, four. Over here, up, and there, that's 4-4, four, four, right? All right, any questions on that? Now, to solve the following system of linear equations by graphing. Well, they're both in standard form, right? And uh, anybody know how we uh, graph these from standard form? 
Anybody remember the discussions we've had in the past about graphing from standard form? I could. I could turn it slope in step form, right? But X intercept, Y intercept. You remember the cover up method? If I got my X intercept, my Y is what? And if I got my Y intercept, my X is zero, right? If you plug those in, those cover up, right? Y'all with me? So the purple one's going to be the top one. So I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a dot at, let's see, negative one and negative one, right? All right. So I'm going to connect those dots in a second. Um, and if we do the green, then x intercept is uh, negative five, and the y intercept is what? Just what? Just five, right? So negative five and five. Okay, let's draw some lines. How's the graphing part of the program in XYZ? Is it is it good or is it bad? Okay. So if we pull the X Y axis, it should allow us to. Uh, do what we need to do and go and do this, but I need another one and I need it to be purple. So let's go find the purple there. Yeah, you see my problem? Is it going to cross at a pretty place? Anybody? Really? Okay. Probably so. My, my copy and paste probably distorted my graph a little bit. So, um, you could turn around and, and take this and put it in what form? Slope intercept form, and you can do your Y intercept, and then you can, um, Y'all feel cool there? Yeah? <laughs> see if it gets a little cool. Sorry. So you can get a little bit more uh, precise if you go to slow print step form. Um, but your program should hit it where you see that, that it's neg uh, negative 3, 2, right? So we're going to say, hey. Do the copy and it should be right now, right? Any questions? And sometimes when you copy and paste in graphs, they get distorted from a uh, aspect ratio of the x and y. So, okay, questions on that? Anybody? Excellent. Okay, now let's talk about some things. When you solve a system of equations, you can solve it by graphing, right? That's one way. But you can also solve it algebraically, and you can do substitution, and you can do elimination. Okay? Those are the two things that we're going to look at. We're not going to look at um, doing inverse matrices or reduced row echelon or any of those crazy things that you can do with a system. Okay, what we're going to do is we've got to make sure we understand that not that certain scenarios tend to lend themselves to being solved one way over the other from a substitution to or an elimination, right? The only way that I will ever solve by substitution is if one equation is in standard and the other one's in slope intercept or solved in terms of one variable, right? the coefficient of one that's that's the easiest and quickest thing to do so let's kind of look at this equation we have 2x minus y equals 2 and one of them and then we have x equals 2y minus 5 
you can see that one of them's in standard form, right? And the other is in solved in terms of, of a variable, right? With a coefficient of one. So it's already solved in terms of sentence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, see this says X, and this right here is all X, right? I'm going to put it in right there. So I'm going to say two times 2Y minus 5 minus Y equals, guess what? 2. And this right here happens to be X, does it not? Okay, so I had this, and I just kind of went up there and put it right there. So I'm going to distribute. That's 4Y minus 10 minus Y equals 2. Um, 3Y minus 10 equals 2. And that this is not going to work out pretty, is it? My math right? Huh? Okay, I was going eight. Okay, I'm I'm with you. My brain was jumping ahead, and skipping some steps, and it missed over that. So we get um, the y to be what four? Okay. So once we find one coordinate. It's really easy to go back in and find the other one because we're going to plug it right into the bottom equation. Once it's already solved in terms of x, that's the one we need. So x equals 2 times 4 minus 5, which is 8 minus 5. x equals, ladies and gentlemen, 3. Now, I can't leave it like that. No way, no how. I have to represent my answer as an ordered pair because, folks, when you solve and the variables don't drop, then you're solving for an intersection, and then that intersection is a point, and that point contains an X and a Y coordinate. So always make sure that you're putting it as an ordered pair. Any questions on that? If you've dealt with any kind of linear equations in your life, you've done systems. Okay. Um, that calculator TI 36X Pro, it'll solve a system. You type it in just like it is, but you have to have you have to put them in standard form. So if I was going to take that, I'd put the 2y back on the other side and make it a negative 2y, and you just put in the coefficients and hit solve, and it does it for you. It's a pretty cool calculator. See me after class, I'll show you how to do it. It's it's worth the knowledge. Okay. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this one. It says for this one, solve the following system for either X or Y, and then use substitution method. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use substitution for this. I'm going to use elimination, okay? Elimination method is you're trying to get, here's the whole scheme to it. You're trying to get the coefficients to be the same number, but opposite signs. So when you add them together, they eliminate themselves, they cancel out. Okay, and remember, you can have elimination and subtraction, or you can do elimination with addition, right? If you're going to do subtraction, that means you got to make them exactly the same. And then just subtract all the way through the equations. That's the biggest mistake because people make a lot more mistakes because they don't carry that negative. When it gets to a negative, when you subtract the negative, it becomes a positive, and people mess that up. So the easiest way to do it is to make sure that you make sure that they're the same number but opposite signs. So I'm nine times out of ten, I'm going after the X because it's right there where I'm working at, right? So I got a one and a one, right? That's great, but I'm going to use elimination. So that means I'm going to take one of them and multiply everything by, guess what? So I've got this and there you go, that. And then I'm just going to come out here and go, okay, I'm going to add them together. This becomes zero, right? This leaves me with negative y equal to one. And, of course, divide both sides by negative 1. Y equals, guess what? Negative 1, right? Any questions about that thus far? You okay? Hmm. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> After 1,500 of them, you'll be okay. Well, no, let's see. How many problems are there? Probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 in there six times. So you got about 100 you could do up to it if you wanted to. All right. So once I find what y is, I'm just going to plug it into either one of these equations. Why would it, why can I plug it into either one of the equations? It's both a solution for the point is the solution for both equations, right? So what we're going to do is this. There you go. It's just, I mean, yeah, you could take the 2y over, right? You could take that 2y and isolate the x if you wanted to, right? And then substitute in and do all that. But it's just, they're already in standard form, guys. Elimination is the way to go, okay? So I really don't care what method you solve it in. You choose. Any questions on that? Now we all good? Sweet. Okay. Now here's this one. It says solve by elimination, right? So I need you to take 10 sackets. Don't do anything other than just look at it for 10 sackets and give me, think about a plan of attack. Okay. 10 sackets. Okay. Okay, so what would be your first move? To multiply the top one by negative one? Ah. Oh. <laughs> All right, so you, you, you really have a fork in a row. Um, you know, I said I always try to attack my exes, right? So I would, you know, if I'm going after the X's, I'm, I'm going to have to multiply one of them by negative one, right? But before you do anything to your X's, always check to see if your Y's are the same number but opposite signs. No? You can't do that? Well, then you're stuck with doing extra steps. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter. But it's all in what you see or remember, right? Because if you don't see that, then okay, no harm, no foul, right? But if you do see that, then you will see that when you add these together, these Y's will automatically do what? Cancel out, right? Yeah? So, uh, no. If you want to try to make the X's go, yeah. But if you just look at it and say, hey, I ain't got to do the X, anything to the X's because my Y's are already positive one and negative one, right? I'm trying to get the coefficient on one of the variables to be the same number but opposite signs. That's my objective, okay? All right. So let me throw some theory in there real quick. When you're solving them algebraically, you, you're going to primarily see where they intersect, right? But what does it look like in order to get the other two types of solutions algebraically? What, what has to happen? You don't remember? Now uh, at the equal zero. Yeah. All right, you're, you're headed down the right path. If you ever get into a problem where you're going to eliminate one of your variables and it happens to eliminate both of them, both your X and your Y drop, then you're left with one or two cases. You're left with a number compared to another number, right? You know, okay, so if these two numbers are not the same, then that is a no solution. But if these two numbers are the same, 
then that is infinite amount of solutions. Y'all remember when we done that when we were solving equations? We had some, you know, variables drop when we were solving equations way back when. Y'all remember that? It's like back in August. It seems like only yesterday. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to add these, right? So that becomes 2x equals what? 8. So x equals 4. So I have 4 plus y equals 9. So negative four. So y equals what? Five. So I have four comma what? There you go. Questions. Oh, so good. X, you okay? You sure? All right, I went ahead and added these because these met the criteria that we were talking about. Okay, so, all right. Okay, dang it. Uh, okay, I'll let you work this one. Let's see what you can do, okay? Let's see what you see and how which way you go. I'll give you, how long do you need? You want a minute? Give you a minute, head start, and I'll start working, and then we can talk. All right. <clears throat> All right. Stuff. I don't like that one. All right, so I'm left with negative 7 and 7, right? Okay, on this problem, once I found the x as being negative 7, I started to use the top one, and I stopped. Anybody know why I stopped? It, it would work. It'd be great. Anybody know why I stopped? Um, see that negative y? It's great. I can take care of this, move it to the other side, but I was going to have to turn around and divide by what? Negative 1, right? Or multiply both sides by negative 1. And it, I wouldn't have to do that if I'd done it down here, right? So that's why I backed up and punted on that. Any questions? I'm hoping I, I pulled one, and I should have probably grabbed one that did the uh, variables drop, right? So you could see it, but hopefully... Uh, I don't know. Maybe there'll be one. Any questions on this? No good? Yeah? All right. Here we go. Let's see what you can do with this. Huh? Multiply the top by 5, right? So multiply everything up top by 5. So that's negative 5x, negative 15y equals 5. And then, of course, just bring the other one over. So that's 5x plus 10y equals 5. And then add them together. And then you get negative 5y equals 10. And, of course, divide by negative 5. So y equals negative 2. Any questions on that? How many equations do I have to plug this back into? How many? Three. I have these two plus the modified one. The modified is one that I can use because what 
in algebra, if you do something to one side and you do it to the other, then you create an equivalent equation, right? So just keep mind of that. Most of the time we go back to the original equations just because if we have made a mistake or something like that, it, we, it's not compounded. No, we don't do a system of three. Nah. Nope. No, nope, nope, nope. If we were teaching, or, or if this was uh, the math modeling class, then yeah. But you do it on the calculator. And the only time it takes to work it is time to plug in the matrices. And you do reduce the row echelon on it, and uh, life is very easy. I got a five negative two. How'd we do? Now rock and rolling. Y'all wait. The rain is kind of. Yeah. Okay. Y'all ready? I put this in on here because I had fractions. And I was like, okay, which problem would give them the hardest time or, or they would say unpleasant things about? So those are kind of how some of my thought process when I go through and choose these problems for you to do. <coughs> so uh, anybody know what I'm about to do? I'm about to make these things pretty. And what I'm going to do is a process called clear my fractions. If you look at my first equation, I have 6, 4, and 12, right? 6 won't go into 4, 4 won't go into 6, but they all go into what? 12. So I'll multiply the top one by 12. So that will give me 2x minus 3y equals 5. So if I distribute that through, that's what it gives me, right? And looking at the bottom, I have 2, 6, and 3, right? Well, shoot, I'm going to multiply that thing by 6, right? And that gives me 3x plus y equal to 2. Now, that's a whole lot prettier than that convoluted thing that they gave us to begin with, right? There you go. Now, how you want to attack this? Do you want to do your X's or do you want to do your Y's? The Y is probably the easiest. But I'm going to show you on this one how to do the X's if you have to do a double multiply. Is that okay? So the Y is the easiest. You just multiply one and get the Y to cancel, right? Multiply the bottom by three, I think. You should be okay. But <clears throat> three won't go into two. Two won't go into three. But they'll both go into what? Six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply one of them by negative 3 and the other one by positive 2. I could have put positive 3 and negative 2 if I wanted to. Doesn't really matter. I just need to get one of them to be negative 6 and the other one to be positive 6. And then I got 6x plus 2y equals 4, right? Now, That gives me 11y equals to what? Negative 11? So y equals negative 1? So if y equals negative 1, then I can say 2x minus 3 times negative 1 equals 5. So 2x plus 3 equals 5 minus 3. So 2x equals 2. Divide by 2x equals 1. So I have one negative one. That's my answer. Y'all good with that? Pretty much the same thing that we've been doing. We just had to clear fractions. 
either want to buy anything, just make sure they look fit by their own specific rules. That's right. Yeah. Because what you're creating are equivalent equations, right? right? As long as what you do to one side, you do to the other, you can multiply them both by 100 if you wanted to. Yeah, or 300 and 200 if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you try to get the same coefficient but opposite signs. That's the only objective. Yeah, you can nerd out so you can. Yeah. I teach this in eighth grade, solving systems. Yeah. Either, either coefficient, whatever you choose. It doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to be the same coefficient but opposite signs. And you could have, I could have chose negative two and positive three to be multiplied, right? Which would have made the negative be down on the bottom, right? I'd still come up with the same answers. So, okay. yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, an eighth grade mind doesn't truly appreciate the equivalent equation thing. They're just happy to go to lunch and come back. But, uh, all right. Okay, guys. Um, word problems with systems. Y'all ready? Let's go. <clears throat> the sum of two numbers is 30. One is four times the other. Well, do we know what those two numbers are? Nope, we don't have a clue, right? So x equals one number, y equals what? Second number, right? It doesn't matter. Right? X equals first and y equals second. Now, the sum of those two are what? 30. Right? They gave me a relationship. But before I do that relationship, I have to identify who my x and my y are, right? That's so critical when it comes to doing these word problems. Got to identify who your x and y is. Now, so we got the sum of those two numbers is equal to 30. One is four times the other. Well, x equals what? 4y, right? Or I could have said 4y equals what? x. It doesn't matter, right? But as long as I put one is equal to four times the other, that's the key. Now, what way do you think we ought to solve this? Just plug it in. What did we, and plugging in wasn't one of those methods. What was the method? Substitution. What is substitution for 5,000? <laughs> we know what you mean. All right. Um, Yeah, okay. So, plug that in there. So, it's 4y plus y equals 30. So, 5y equals 30. Y equals 6, right? So, if y equals 6, then x equals 4 times 6, which is 24, right? So, I got 24 and who? 6. So, it just says the smaller number is blank and the while the larger number is blank. So the smaller number is 6, while the larger number is what? 24. All right. Now, what I should have went back and, and asked is any questions on coming up with those two equations in red that I highlighted? Anybody? You would have got one number to be uh, y would have been 24x would have been 6. So, but you're going to come up with two numbers. I had to get to give you 30, but okay. The really cool thing about these, they're algorithmically generated, right? Which means what? process doesn't change only the numbers right okay be mindful of that all right so most famous system of equation problem is the coins right so ron has 17 coins with a total of four no total value of two dollars and 45 cents right the coins are dimes and quarters 
how many of each coins does he have? So, first things first. X, uh, nah, hold up. X and what? So, we go make X dimes and Y is what? Quarters. First things first. Got to do that, right? Okay. So, when you have a, a equation like this or a word problem like this, you have to understand that, excuse me, that systems work in patterns. And these pattern, patterns happen to deal with totals and then values, right? Totals and values. Look at the previous problem. They said the sum of the two numbers was 30, right? So that's a total, correct? So how many coins do we have? 17. What are they comprised of? What are they made up of? Look at this. X plus Y equals 17. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. The next equation will happen to deal with a value. Because not only did they tell us how many coins and the denomination of the two coins, they told us how much money we had in value. Right? So they told us we had two dollars and forty-five cents. Now I, you can do this with decimals if you want to, but I'm going to show you how to do this in terms of no decimals, meaning cents, right? Y'all with me? So a dime is worth how much? Ten cents plus a quarter, which is twenty-five, equals two hundred and forty-five what? Cents. There you go. No decimals. You write it all in terms of cents, right? So there. Now, what do you think is the first thing you're going to do? You, you, we're going to use elimination. We're going to multiply our top one by what, guys? Negative 10, right? So go ahead. Solve that joker. All right, so they said we had 12 for dimes, and then how many quarters? Five. Okay. Everybody in, in agreement? Speak now forever, hold your peace. No? Do I need to work it? Yes or no? Huh? Okay. Well, five quarters quarters was y, right? So you're gonna plug it back into the top equation. X plus five equals seventeen, minus five on both sides, and you got twelve, right? Twelve dimes. Okay. So all right. Okay, the famous mixture problem. Now, we can do this with a system if you'd like. Or, we can treat this just like a, a linear equation. And not do a system. How would y'all like to do it? The easier way. So let me show you the easier way. Um, the easiest way is to do a table, y'all. So, and what I mean by table is, uh, I hope I do this right. I think I need that. Yeah, four. Good. Got it. Good. All right. So, uh, so you can't do this. I can. So we have. Uh, Next one, or I should say, and now let's do this. Um, amount, percent, solution, and then total, right? And then items, correct? So we have a um, we have a mixture of six percent disinfectant solution. 
that needs to be made from a 7% to 4% disinfectant. How much of each solution should be used if 33 gallons of a 6% solution are needed? Okay, so we're trying to make, we're trying to make a 6% solution, right? And we're trying to make how much of it? 33 gallons, right? And we know that this 6% solution is 6, right? Y'all agree? Okay. Any questions about that thus far? Now, the two items that we're using is this. We're using a 7% solution, right? We don't know how much, right, do we? But we know its solution is what? 7%. Now, the other one is a 4% solution. We don't know how much, do we? But we do know that it's 4%, right? Y'all agree? Okay. Would you believe me that you're 85% done at this point? 85% done with this problem just by doing that. So we have an item, right? We have an amount, we have a percent solution, and then we have a total, right? So watch this. How much do we have of the 7%? How much? No, no, no. We got 33 of the final solution, right? How much do we have of the of 7%? We don't know. So what do we do in math when we have a I don't know? We put an X. So if that's X, then the other amount has to be what? 33 minus X, right? Yeah? So what's this? So stop, drop, look, and listen. X times 7 is what? 4 times this is 4 times 33 minus X, right? And then 33 times 6 is 180 plus 18, which is 198. Right? Double check my math. Yeah. Okay. All right. So watch this. These two added together has to equal what? 198. 7x. Plus 4 times 33 minus 6 equals 198. Done. Solve the equation. That's all you're doing. X is 22, right? Yes or no? Okay, so X belongs to who? To the 7%, right? So I have 22 gallons of the 7%, and then 33 minus 22 would be what? 11 gallons of the 4%. I'll leave that right there. Take a look at it. Okay, here we go. Another famous one is tickets sold, right? We're going to do this just like we've done the quarters. Just like we've done the quarters. So we're going to have a totals and a values, right? Totals and values. So look through it and let's see. Well, let's do this so that everybody's on the same page. We're talking about two types of tickets, right? Yeah? So let's go ahead and define X as being a child and Y as being an adult. 
Can we go ahead and do that? Because that's really the first thing God do. Now, you go through it. You write me two equations, and we're going to compare. Because that's the hardest part. You can't work it unless you write them. Okay? So go. What do we do? I'm going to put that 1x there. Does mine look like yours? Yeah or nay? Yeah. What do you mean you swapped it? Yeah, but that's the first thing we said. Make x the child while the dog, so we'd have the same. But it don't matter. As long as you make that determination and stick to it, you're fine, right? So x plus y equals 800. And then... 1x plus 2y equals 12, 25. If you swapped adults and child, then yours would be 2x plus 1y equals, right? Yeah, you still get the same thing. Anybody, what do you get? What'd y'all get? Yeah. You got a what now? Y'all agree with that? Yeah? Y'all are mighty trustworthy, right? I got 375 and 425. Y'all good? You see what I done right there? No? System sauce. You're putting in the coefficients. Coefficient x, coefficient of y, and the other one, right? But it's going to, it's going to, when you hit enter, it's going to go to this in case you need to change it to a minus. Does that make sense? When you do it, you will. Come see me. All right, so what was it? Again, x is what now? And then 425, right? So 375 child and 425 adults, right? <clears throat> if I have to solve this by elimination, then I'm multiplying the top one by a negative, right? And then add them together, and then it just kind of cancels out and goes from there. Here? Which one did you do with the negative? Top or bottom? I'm off by the top one by negative one. Okay. Okay. Can't come up with a decimal. Because your coefficient is one. Hold on. I, I, I think I did minus two. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so we we got uh, three seventy five, no four twenty five, right? Yeah, there you go. And then plug that back in, eight hundred minus those, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. What confuses me is when you get on the second one, you get x plus y equals eight hundred, x plus two y equals. So the first one is a totals. How many do I have? Right? And the second one is a value. How much does a child's ticket cost? A dollar. A dollar times how many of the child's tickets plus two dollars for an adult times how many tickets were sold will give me a profit of or in a total amount of $1,225. So that's really what you're doing. Dollar times amount plus dollar times amount equals a dollar of all that, right? So it's a value equation. What is the cost of my child? What is the cost of my adult? How much money did I take in? Okay. It's kind of like, what's the cost? Uh, so if it had been two and four dollars, two extra, mm -hmm. four dollars. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same. It's the same scenario as the coins, right? Think about it. The second equation was... 10x plus 25y equals, and I changed that into cents, right, by just dropping the decimal. So that's the key on that one. Okay.
Y'all good? Yeah. Wake up. Sleepy. No. Okay. All right. We've done one of these already. We did one of these in the first section, right? I'm not going to do it with a system. But I am going to set it up in how you should do it, right? And that's this. So we have 8% um, times some amount, right? Plus 10% times some amount, right? Equals $2,040, right? Oh, it's 12%? Okay, not bad. Is it 8%? Okay, got this. So that's 0 0.112, right? Now, because this is like the simple interest, right? Um, I equals TRT, right? The principal times the rate times the time. Well, the time is all the what? Same. So that really just goes to the wayside, right? So interest is equal to the principal times the, the interest rate. Now, interest rate has to be as a decimal. That's the kicker. That's the key. You got to make sure. So how much did we put in at 8%, guys? Yeah, we put X in. Yeah, we put X in, right? Sure, sure enough. Now, how much did we put in at 12%? 21,000 minus X, right? You can do this in a table if you want to, right? There's ways to show this worked out so you can plug it. I mean, if you think about it, P times R equals that plus this has to equal how much interest, right? So a yeah, table sets up real nice, but this is, we've, we've done this one before, guys. So solve it. Tell me what you get for X. Sixty-three. No, can't be. That can't be right. What'd y'all get? Can't be sixty-three thousand. I've done something wrong. Oh, I know what it was. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, 2520 minus 2040 divided by 0.04. How about 12,000? Did you get 12,000? Yeah. So the 8% uh, account got 12,000, while the 12% got what? Nine? And that math, 12 and nine make 21? Yes, thank you. Distribute, combine like terms, move the number to over to the other side, and you'll have a negative divided by a negative, right? And that's okay because two negatives make a positive, and that's what we want anyway. Y'all good? Okay. Anybody want to see this in the system? You'll see this as system. Huh? You want to do a system? It was? You liked it? We're here. We should have what? X plus Y? Mm-mm. 
What is it? X plus Y equals what, guys? Is it the interest? No. It'd be how much? Because X and Y is the, the principal, right? Oh. Well, I was still debating. And then I have what? Zero point. Do you want to do? Oh, yeah, we got to put zero eight. We have to. Sorry. Then 2040, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's My brain just doesn't go to a system on that. But you can do it. Really? Yeah. It depends on how you, how what what you see and what you're comfortable with, right? That so it doesn't matter to me. You got multiple ways. Pick one, but you got to pick one, right? All right, you good? Sweet. Okay, last one on this one. A stuffed animal business has a total cost production of C, C of X equals 12X plus 660 and a revenue function of R of X equals 20X. Find the break-even point. Well, folks, where do we find the break-even point? Yeah, zero. But how are you going to do that? you got a cost, you have revenue. It's when they're what? Equal, right? Their difference has to be what? Zero, right? Does that make sense? So, yeah, we're just going to put 12x plus 60 equal to 20x, right? And, of course, we move that baby over. So 60 equals what? 8x? All right. Ain't going to 60. Yeah, we could. We could. We could have some change. Let's go get some change. 750. Now. What do I do with that 750? If I put it in the first equation, and if I put it in the second equation, I better get the what? Same thing, right? So 20 times 7.5 is 150, right? Then 12 times uh -oh, times 7.5 equals 90. And 90 plus 60 equals how much? Voila. 